Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about Spring and LDAP. I found this article at Java World a few days ago. And, um, you know, this was <coughs> a pretty good idea on breaking things up using Spring. I've never tried it before. I've been doing LDAP provisioning for a few years now, mostly with Active Directory. And <coughs> when I was first learning, you know, I bought, my, bought the book on JNDI LDAP stuff, and I was going through it and did all the examples, installed Fedora DS and had everything going and then when I tried to run it on Microsoft Active Directory of course none of it worked so <laughs> yeah, surprise and so I was curious to see if Spring had gotten a little bit better and I think it turns out that everything's kind of gotten a little bit better and coming toward the center I've I got Adam installed it's like lightweight Apache or lightweight Active Directory actually on a XP laptop here and I got Apache DS running on an Enterprise Linux box on a VM in the other room. So I can kind of have both of them going at the same time. And it seems like um, everything is mostly coming toward the center. The Atom Active Directory flavor seems to be a, has gotten a little bit more Unix-like, which certainly helps. Of course, the open source ones are still more Unix-like, so they didn't change much but it looks like at least Microsoft is coming toward the center a little so that's cool um, so anyway um, I found this and used it to get started this of course I believe somewhere he says this is actually coded for Apache DS so of course all of this worked which was a good starting point um, there was just a couple minor things in here that were a little funky and that was right here where the update is a rebind well um, when you do a rebind you're going to do a delete and an ad and that messes up the password and would probably make a lot of users unhappy if you plan on using this to do any kind of um, LDAP provisioning which is what I've been using you know doing LDAP for actually so um, so let's take a look at what I did so I enhanced the uh, interface to add a few more methods so if you're going to be doing provisioning these are the kind of things you're probably going to need to do um, the extra ones I added would be, you know, a default user group. Um, you'd need to get the user's DN. Um, you might have a couple of different ways to get the contact information, and predominantly a user ID is going to be more common than than doing it this way. Um, the other thing is you're probably going to need to enable and disable a user, and you'll see as I break this up how you know you can split it up into different pieces where they're most common. So. Um, what we have here is a base contact DAO, which is really going to be predominantly getting all the, using the getters and the setters. Um, the searching is going to be pretty much the same. We're only going to be using a single attribute here. Um, for example, um, Adam and Apache both have the UID. Um, on the older flavors of Active Directory, you might have something called a SAM account name, um, in which case you might you would be better off using the um, searcher where you can pass in an attribute and because we're cr because it's creating an inner class here it just needs to be final or you won't be able to reach it here you won't see it so um, then of course the other ones there's different ways of doing get contact details and I broke that up into separate pieces where here you just you're just passing in the filter it's running the filter um, checking for too many users throwing that exception if so um, if it's if there aren't any users it returns null for no user found basically if there is a user we get it and then try and look up his groups and then populate the groups in the model so here is what you would call and pass in the common name or the last name or you would pass in the user ID and we would basically just create the, um, the search filter and then just run the common searcher um, here we're going to get user groups um, get all the groups for a user um, here we're going to remove all the groups for a user we're probably going to need to do that if we delete the user and here we're going to add user groups so we're going to get the users groups remove the users groups add the users add groups you know to a user um, get a users DN now it's possible that this might be different between the different um, LDAP servers in, in this case it, it isn't um, and then of course we're going to delete content again this one could be different but in this case it's not here we have a couple of different flavors of dealing with passwords um, for Apache DS, we're doing a SHA encryption. For um, AD, we're not doing any encryption at all. It's plain text. However, we did have to disable SSL um, because normally um, 
Active Directory will require an SSL cert to update passwords. We disabled it for our testing. Um, but in this case, it's clear text. On the older versions of Active Directory, the password needed to be Unicode. So um, I added this little method here in case you need to uh, use an older flavor of Active Directory. This might come in handy. And the attribute is, um, I think it's Unicode PWD would be the older attribute. So from what I can tell messing with the two, these are the most common flavors, the common methods here that seem to be working in both cases. Um, we have our setters here to set up all the attributes that we need. So if we look at the XML that we're using to define our beans, we, ha we added all these extra setters that aren't in um, the one that we downloaded from uh, the site with the Java, from Java World. I don't know if, um, yeah, it's probably here somewhere we could do a print flavor here. So let's see if the, uh, that's the older flavor. This would be an older version of using it without Spring. This is pretty much the way I've been doing it. Here's the Spring flavor. Okay, here's the property. So you see here we have our um, DAO. Um, now the context you notice is adding a few more things and we basically replicated some of these down to here. Um, I'm not using the pool because it's batch. Um, I'm not sure if that would actually do any good here. Um, here's the LDAP template that we have and then what I've done is added a bunch more to make it more common. This is how we ended up having as many common methods as we did by adding more of these properties. So for example, a group search in um, Apache looks like this with a unique member and a group of unique names, whereas in Active Directory it's an object class group and the member is the attribute. So by adding some extra properties we were able to commonize some more of the code. Okay, so here we have our base class once again. Um, we've just basically, it's mostly attributes, all the common methods, and a couple of the little um, um, weird ducks for the password handling. Okay, so now we have our Apache DS, and here we're going to extend the base class to pick up all that common code, and then we're going to implement our um, interface, which is going to force us to um, basically fill in the rest of the blanks here, and in, and in this case it's going to be the insert contact, um, the um, update contact, the disable and enable user. Okay, so these are the ones where you might have a, a, a varying degree of different attributes that you might not have on the other ones. So like a name field or a description field or, you know, like I said, the UID wasn't in the old um, Active Directory. So this is where you're most likely to come up with most of your differences. Um, the other thing here is, for example, Apache DS doesn't have the concept of disable and enable. So here I just left them blank, but what you could do is you could call the delete method and the add method for the enable. Um, here I'm just leaving them blank. I'm not doing anything with it. So now let's, if we take a look here at our Atom uh, flavor, um, what we're doing here, our create is actually different already because we need to figure out what our distinguished name is in order to create a distinguished name field. So that's one of the differences already. Here we have a name field we're populating. Um, I think Apache DS does also, but I'm just using this to demonstrate what could be different. Um, the biggest one being this one here, actually. So, and then for the update, um, we're doing basically the same thing. Um, I was thinking about this, though. In this case, what you might want to do is check those attributes. So you would want to say, you know, if uh, contact DTO get common name isn't null, then you would populate the attribute here just so you would only be updating the fields that are changing and then the caller would have the option of only populating fields in the model that need to change okay so and then here we have a disable user now in Atom it has an attribute so we want to set this attribute to true if we're going to disable the user and to enable the user we want to set it to false so there's another example of where you might have some subtle differences okay um, another thing I didn't go over was the actual model itself. So when we do a lookup by user, if we go back to our base class where we're doing the lookup, um, an individual lookup. For these lookups here, by the way, we, we only have a handful of users, and so we're getting just a list of UIDs or a list of whatever this adder is, and basically it's going to be a list of that string. 
and in our demo um, class we're going to iterate this list and then basically get the details of each user um, in larger shops you you could potentially have up to 40 to 50,000 users in an AD system and you don't want to just get 50,000 of all of everything so you know we just get what the little pieces that we need and then we take pot shots at it um, again however if you're doing 50,000 you might want to implement some form of paging there's a way to do LDAP paging um, I actually have a, a way of doing that that I'll do another video and in another video we'll also combine SSL which we've disabled on the Atom side for this um, demo so anyway back to here you see what we're doing is in the search we're, we're using this concept here where um, Spring has this concept of an attribute mapper and um, so the attribute mapper is basically going to build these models so let's go take a look at the mapper so here's the mapper and the default um, method is map from attributes so you get a list of the attributes that were read from the LDAP server and then here you get to go through them okay quick thing here is that um, attributes that you absolutely know are going to be in all of them you could you can do this um, actually it would be more like uh, this so the CN is going to be there once you once you do this you're pretty much committed now if this attribute doesn't exist this is a null pointer exception right here so you might want to check them um, more like this way where you can say well do I even have the attribute and if I do now get a value where you don't particularly care if the value is empty rather than getting a null for not having the attribute at all so now here what you can do is you can be you know more specific in that okay well we don't have a distinguished name in um, Apache DS so here we will have to check in that case and then populate it accordingly